Hi everyone, my name is Angela from Angela Stitches and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'll be working on Oliver by Stacey Nash because Oliver had a couple more comments than the other projects that I mentioned in my last video. And I'm actually really excited because this is one of my favorites, but also it's really small and super simple. So I think I could finish this one pretty quick. Um, so this is what it looks like when it's finished and it calls for some specialty stuff, but... I'm just using what I have and stitching it with DMC and this is a 32 count fabric called Dirty and I think it looks very similar to the cover photo but I did buy a length of ribbon to finish. Um, it's like a velvety type ribbon and I think it's going to look really cute. So I have it right here so let me show you. So it's a different color but it's like a burnt burgundy color or I don't know like a brown color I guess. And I think this will look really nice um, with this project. So I'm going to finish this with this ribbon and maybe the hanger too. I don't know yet. And for the backing fabric, I think I'll use one of these. And I'm thinking about this reddish one. It's more like on the pink side. But I also feel like most of these will work with this project. Um, I think this dark brown looks really nice with the ribbon too. But... I'll probably go with this pink one um, but before I decide on that I need to finish the actual stitching on it so I'm going to work on this today and after I finish this project I think I'll start working on one of the other projects um, that was mentioned in the last comment section or in the comment section in my last video so right after Oliver I'll start one of these so please leave a comment which one out of these three and I'll start working on that right after Oliver so this is Spirit of Snow Angel, and I'll show you how much I have done on this one. So it looks like I got most of her face done and her hair. And I think my favorite part in this design is, well, the polar bears are really cute, but her wings and her halo is really pretty. So that was the Snow Angel. And then I have Mrs. Claus. And this has a lot of smaller items, like my cross-stitch angel with cookies and cakes. And I really love how this puppy is wearing a little Christmas sweater. So, oh, I actually got a good amount done on this one. And I also got the cup done too. I don't even remember stitching this. But super excited about this one too. I think it's very Christmassy. And my last option is my Spirit of Mistletoe. And this is when I started it. And she's a very fancy lady. And I know how much I have on this one. Um, I think I got like the front of her, or actually like the back part of her dress started but it swoops in front of her. So I started on that. So this is how much I have done on this project. So yeah, those are the three projects and I'll start working on whatever has the most common out of these three. And I really like how these three projects are so different in color scheme, but then it's all winter related. So I think that's really cool. So now I'm going to start working on Oliver and I forgot to mention earlier, so after I finish stitching Oliver, I'm going to boil this whole thing in hot water because I want to shrink the whole thing just a tad bit. So I did a little test here before I started. So these two stitches um, were stitched before I boiled this piece in hot water. So compared to the stitches right below them, like these ones, um, so there is a size difference and coverage difference. And this is mostly stitched one over two and some places 2 over 2, so I just wanted to experiment with shrinking the fabric after finishing the project. So yeah, that's my plan for this project. So I'm going to stitch a little bit now and come back later and continue.
So I went back and forth between stitching and making some bread and it didn't rise as much as I wanted it to but it still tastes good so that was really fun to do but I want to show you how much I got down on Oliver so far. So I worked on filling in his cheeks I guess and then I think it looks really cool how it calls for 1 over 2 in some areas but also 2 over 2 in like this um, his nose and his eyes and I think it gives definition with the same colors so I think that's really cool so yeah I stitched his cheek and his eye and I'm working on his ear so I think I'll finish all of the like the other ear and his other eye and then all I have to do is just fill in everything with the black 1 over 2 and yeah so I'm going to have some dinner now so I'll come back later to check in if I get more stitching then So after dinner, I finished his ear, or his their, uh, his ears, and the other eye. So all I need to do now is just fill in the empty spaces with black, 1 over 2. And this chart actually calls for general arts, but I didn't get them. So I'm just using converted version of, or I, I think I actually looked it up myself and found the equivalent DMC to the gentle arts. So for the ears, I use this, 3021. And I'm just cleaning this up because it's all tangled, but for black, I'm using Anchor 403 instead of Anchor, I mean, uh, instead of DMC 310. I can't talk today. And then for the eyes, I use 3045. And this is everything that I called for this project. Or actually, I need another color for the whiskers, like a very light ivory color. But I'm going to do that at the end. And I realized that I have most things to finish this project, but I don't have anything to use for the hanger. Um, I don't want to use the same ribbon for the bow, actually. So I need to think about that. And also a button. Um, I really like this detail, so I'm going to see what I have. But yeah, I think I'm done stitching for tonight, so um, I'll see you tomorrow. It is Monday morning, and today I decided to stay home and do some work at home instead. Um, instead of going to the studio, but instead of working, I've been doing some jigsaw puzzles, so I thought I would show you. Um, I don't know if this will be interesting to you or not, but it's, it's almost like cross-stitching, 
putting small pieces together to make a bigger image. Um, I think that's very similar to cross stitching and diamond painting. So I got like the border finish and this might be the easiest part to do. And this is my first time doing this puzzle. But the space isn't big enough for this puzzle so I had to break it apart but I did get the whole border done. So let me show you the image. And this is a 1000 piece puzzle and I'm using the boxes to sort out the puzzles. It just makes it easier for me to put the pieces together. So I can't show you the bigger image because it's on the box but there is an image on the side here but it's upside down. So apparently this is one of the hardest puzzle to do because it's a Jackson Pollock painting. So if you know his work, you'll understand the difficulty of this project. But I just love these colors and also I like how these puzzles aren't glossy. Most puzzles, pieces that I've worked on so far were very glossy and it's really hard to work with them because you can't really see them. It's really hard to look at the image on the puzzle pieces. But these are actually matte and also it has a slight texture to them. So it's really nice to touch too. So yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with this. But one thing about this though is that this puzzle has the white border or like the white background to it. So I don't know if I like that or not, but it feels like an extra step. But yeah, I kind of wish it was just the image without the white background. But it's still super fun. So I know I'm getting into the hard part now, which is the painting itself. But I think I'm going to have to do some actual work now and maybe stitch because I haven't worked on Oliver yet. So I'll come back later to check in and show you my progress on Oliver. I'm back doing my puzzle again, so I sorted out all of the colors, or the puzzles that had the color blue in it. And I've worked on this for several hours, but this is all I got done. It's really hard, and I'm not looking at the picture for a reference. I just, um, I don't know, I just wanted to make it really hard for me. But yeah, so I did work on Oliver for a little bit, so here's my progress. I just need to fill in the rest of the area with black, and that's all I need to do with this. And... If I didn't work on the puzzle, maybe I would have finished it, but doing this puzzle is super fun. So I think I'll go back doing the puzzle again for a little bit and stitch again tomorrow. Um, I feel like this video has like 10% stitching and 90% everything else, but yeah, I'll check in again when I have more stitching done. Probably when I get all of it finished. I got all of the stitching done, so now I'm going to try to shrink this just a little bit. Honestly, I don't have to do this, but I just wanted to experiment with it. Since it's so small, if I mess up, it's not really going to be a big deal. But at the same time, I don't think this will get messed up in any way. So I'm going to put this in the boiling water and then move it into a ice water bath. Um, I think someone commented that that's how you shrink fabric. So I'm going to try to do that. So before I try shrinking it, I'm just going to measure it just to see if it did work. Um, I think it'll shrink maybe like a stitch. So this has already been shrunk once. So it started out as a 32 count, but right now it's more like a 33 count. And I think after I do it again um, today, it'll be maybe a 34 count to 35 count. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. So I have my ruler here. So this is about 
6.4, 6.5 centimeter wide, and then 5.8 long. So let's see if this shrinks. So I put this in the hot water for several minutes and then dunk it in ice water. And um, this is still wet and I could tell it did shrink a little bit, like his whiskers are kind of loose now. So let's measure this and see if it shrank. Yeah, the whiskers are really loose now. I don't know if I should redo them, but... And this is still wet, so it'll be a little different after this dries, but I just wanted to measure it just to see. So it looks like it's about... Oh, wow, 6.2 centimeters wide. It was 6.4 before. And then this way, it is 5.6. So it did shrink about 0.2 centimeters on all sides. And it does look like the black stitches look darker but it is wet so I can't know for sure so let me um, iron this and come back in a few minutes so I'm going to measure this one last time and this is ironed and flat now so it is about 6.3 centimeters wide so it did expand 0.1 centimeters so one millimeter and that makes sense and then it is about 5.7 ish so it did expand a little bit after the ironing and that makes total sense um, because I'm flattening out the wrinkles. So that was my little experiment and I wanted to do this because when I started this project I wanted to work on a 35 count but all I had was 32 counts and I was wondering if I could shrink my fabrics on my own because I knew during the dyeing process sometimes fabrics shrink. So. Yeah, so I think this might be about 35 count now. So I achieved what I wanted to do with this, so super happy about that. And I was thinking about maybe redoing the back stitching for his whiskers, but I think I, I'll just leave it this way, a little loose. Um, I think it kind of adds to the primitiveness of this design. And let me come back to show you some finishing materials, but I don't think I'm going to be finishing this in this video because I realized that I don't have any... Um, because I want to finish this into a pillow, like a hanging pillow in the picture. And I don't have anything to put in the pillow, like cotton filling or stuffing. But let me just show you what I have and then I'll make a part 2 of this video like I did last time. So instead of that pink fabric, I think I'll use this. And I've used this for two projects so far and this is just small enough to finish Oliver. And I don't think there will be a time anytime soon where I work on something this small that this fabric will fit. And to be honest, I think I like this more than the other pink fabric. I'm super happy that I didn't waste any of this fabric. Um, this was a hand-dyed color and cotton fabric that was included in one of the Halloween boxes. And then for the ribbon, I made this little bow. And I think um, I said I was going to add a button, just like in the picture. But the way I made this bow, I don't think I need it. So I'm just going to skip that. And so this is what it looks like. Um, there's a black button, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm just going to attach this somehow and it looks so cute already i'm super happy with it but i'm gonna have to make this a little smaller but still it looks really cute and for the hanger um i think i'll order something more suitable when i order the cotton stuffing so i'm gonna do that and yeah so i guess that's everything that i can do for this project for now but it's all good because i'll post this video and read the comments and then I'll prepare for my next perforated paper project based on your votes. So yeah, I hope this video was kind of interesting. I know there was a lot of cooking and other things in it, but lately I've been getting the most use of the new oven and it's really fun baking and cooking. So I've been doing a lot of that. So yeah, I guess that's it. And oh, for this month, I'm not going to make any needle minders. I'm more inspired to make charts. So maybe sometime during the first week of September, I'll have a new cross stitch chart coming out. So I'll talk a little bit more about that next time. And yeah, I guess that's really it. So thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I love reading all of your comments. So thank you for that. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.